here they are, leaving their hotels for a look at London. Nelson looks a bit standoffish, so, as he won't look down to see who's here, the visiting miners from Waterhague Colliery Leeds look up. There are 35 of them, and they're in London to see the Rugby League final at Wembley. Lancia's Lions guard Nelson, but so far they've never bitten anybody. And now for the best-known pigeons in the world. Mr. Featherstone, the mascot, has come along too, of course. The Rovers win through to the final, thrilled all Yorkshire, and all true lovers of the game. To Hobart House next day to meet Sir Geoffrey Vickers of the National Coal Board, and then it's off to Wembley for the Cup. This is Olympic Way, the road built especially to the stadium for the Olympics. Maybe it is two northern teams playing a game that's not played in the south. But there are 73,000 others come to see the match too, besides our heroes. And the guards band has turned out in style. Featherstone in white played some grand football, but Workington were just that little bit too quick for them. Here's a nice bit of Featherstone teamwork. Most accounts say it was the finest rugby league match ever seen in the South, although London was sweltering in a brief summer. Hard luck, Featherstone, but Workington well deserved their victory. Now it's the last day, and a big thrill, a day at the huge Elstree Studios of Associated British Pictures. Beneath a big welcome sign, the visitors are greeted by Mr. C.J. Latter, the managing director, and Mr. Goodlatt, managing director of ABC Cinemas. The visit was a return for Leeds hospitality to Messrs. Latter and Goodlatt. ABC starlet Janet Scott had buttonholes for everybody. And here they are, all mixed up with a big bunch of stars and high-ups in the British film world. We'll get lunch over next, before showing you what they did before lunch. The centre of interest is what looks like a big heap of coal. That's the big surprise. That's coal miner Latter as he looked when he went down the pit at Waterhay Colliery during a visit to Leeds with his friend coal miner Goodlatte. Mr. Latter proposed the health of the visitors in a short speech. A long speech would delay the important business in hand. When they'd emptied the business in hand and refilled, Bob Slater replied on behalf of the miners, and that was the end of the speeches. Now it's presents for the stars. There's one for Janet Scott, too. But now look who's here. A miner straight from the coalface. Well, anyway, the coalface we saw just now. Expert eyes can tell it's a phony. And what do they want with lumps of coal, anyway? Well, the lumps of coal are phonies, too. There's a pair of nylons for the missus as well, and in the lump of coal, there's a bottle of champagne. A three-decker cake with a big surprise in it rounds off the meal. Now for the tour of the studios, the largest in Britain, where so many big hit films have been made. The property room contains practically everything that can be wanted for building scenes. That's lovely Christine Norden, the one with the hat.
pity that's a phony too. Now they're looking at designs for sets. Shortly, we'll look in at a scene being filmed. The carpenter shop. They can make anything here from a mouse trap to a mansion. But you want to be careful what you monkey with. Now they're ready for us on the set, so let's go and see what's doing. The film they're making is top secret, and we've got to be very hush-hush up here during the take. OK, that shot is over, so let's go down on the set and meet Mario Zampi, the brilliant director of Top Secret. He pulled their legs when they first entered by pretending to be temperamental. And they soon found he was only kidding. Now some of the boys put on their makeup to show the stars what a miner looks like when he's in action. Here's Joan Dowling looking very interested. I can't help thinking if they laid on this kind of attention at every pit, there ought to be a big rush of volunteers for the mines. But joking apart, the stars are certainly doing their best to make our friends happy. But now we come to the end of the visit. If the NCB could do with a couple of good miners, we know where they live.